It been showing me a lot of love and it telling me that I got a hit. What my say? What my to say? Say. I do want to ask you one question. Sure. I seen that you posted a female rapper by the name of Sukiyana. Right? Uh huh. What would you say to our good sister about that? Uh, right? Sister Sukiyana. I never heard of the queen before a supporter of mine sent me the video. Pop that cat, throw that cat, hit the bills like you better sell that cat. This is the rapper Sukihana that he's referring to as a queen. Dr. Umar has lost his mind. In what world have you ever seen a queen acting ratchet like this? You know, where she said, I'm not going to use her words, but where she said, if I wanted to spend some private time with a man, it'll be Dr. Umar. And then at the end of the video, she says, if Dr. Umar met me, he would shoot his shot because he had seen that I'm a beautiful black African conscious queen. The ratchet bitch, suck a mean I could use some guidance. I got a little bit of daddy issues. She was very humble. I would be open to meeting with her to mm -hmm. see where her head is. Because first, it's always politics before Punani for me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to get my, my stretched. Stretch. I'm trying to get my stretched. And we be eating this ass today. So what can we do together to build the community? Now, obviously, her content isn't something I could endorse. But it seemed to me that if she's willing to follow my lead, that she might be ready to make a transition from the raunchiness. We be eating this ass today in London. Period. Baby. To the righteousness. And so maybe she'll take all her followers and bring them into a more conscious lifestyle. That would be a conversation we would need to have, though. At this point, I don't want to pay no 20, 30,000 for no teeth if I can't eat crab legs. It's where's my tooth? But if she decided to turn the corner and leave that content alone for something that is more conscious and more positive for our daughters and sons, I would work with her. And I think we could do a whole lot together, too your sons and daughters. Now, Dr. Umar knows better. He's just talking. You know damn well you can't turn a 304 into a housewife. But if he feels like he can do it, then more power to him. But for those of out here who are embarrassed by this so-called music she's making, we wouldn't give her the time of day. But keep listening, he gets worse. And what I also tell that black women, if you're going to go get you an African man from the continent, you're going to have to understand that the way in which you talk to black men in America mm -hmm. will not be tolerated over there. Mm -hmm. Why the it, fuck is it, it it's tolerated But it's not tolerated here. here. That's what we're trying to tell them. Well, over here, I want to say this to us, though. And here we go, blaming men for everything. Because we try to act like the way sisters treat us doesn't have a history that we are not at least partly responsible for. Let's be honest. The black woman has had to hold down the black house by herself, although imperfectly. She's had to do it by herself since the mass incarceration of black males began in the 1970s. The average black women who are complaining that men are no good, who are single and living on their own and paying all their bills, average between the age of 25 to 40 years old. This means that these women were born in the 1980s and the 1990s. And even if she was born in the 1970s, she'd be too young to even know what was going on in the 70s. That being said, the majority of these women who are doing it by themselves nowadays is because they themselves made bad choices in men to spend their time with and get pregnant by. Most of them knew that guy wasn't sh when she first met him, but she stayed with him. So when a sister says, I don't need a man, because she couldn't find one strong enough to hold her down. Or when you meet a woman and you say, sister, I'm, I'm strong enough to be a man. You ain't got the work or you ain't got to pay the bills or whatever. Pull back. I got you. And she can't do it because all the other men before you mm -hmm. who disappointed her. So now, because of the men who disappointed her in her past, the men coming into her life now have to pay for it. Nope. I don't think so. If a woman vetted a man properly, she saw that he was holding down his household in a correct manner before she came along. She shouldn't have any problem pulling back and letting him handle business. If she gets the right guy in her life and she can't let him be the man that he was in his own household, she's not the woman for him and he should just move on. Most of these women don't prepare themselves for the husband that they claim they want. Good men who have it together are not supposed to adjust to her. It's the other way around. Okay, here's the myth. You're not gonna like it, but here's the myth. God is preparing a man for you. Incorrect. Biblically speaking, the Bible says that God created Eve for Adam, not Adam for Eve. I'm going to let you sit on that for a couple seconds. God created Eve for Adam, not Adam for Eve. So the one God is preparing is you. You have to understand that God prepares you as a woman to come into the life of a man to be a helpmate, to bring value into his life, to be able to allow him and encourage him to do what God has destined for him to do. But as a woman that is unprepared, what happens is instead of allowing the man to do what God has called him to do, you make it all about you. And you want the man to make you his God. It was never planned that way. As a woman, you need to align with your man and both of you need to serve God because that is what God ordained for man and woman to join together and serve God. So for the guys out there saying that's right, remember, 
you actually have to have your stuff together. And for the women out there saying that they're not going to do all that, by all means, keep that mindset. And that man should move on to a woman who has prepared herself for her husband. But what I'm saying is black men, we got to be patient with our women because we created that personality. What is this we? He's speaking French. Uh, we have to be held strong. accountable for their poor selection. No, you have to be held accountable because they have a poor selection. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. The poor selection of men themselves have to be held accountable for being a poor selection. Why do we men who have our stuff together have to be accountable for men who don't? Dr. Umar, you know damn well these women out here are not going to pay for what some poor selected woman did to us in our past. So why should we? Remember when this young brother said this? And to be quite honest with you, I don't care why you're masculine. I don't, it don't care. Even matter. I don't care what happened to you as a, I'm a 40 year old man. You I don't got a care. daughter? No, I don't. But that's not fair. Your but my point is this. My point is this. That's right. You all wouldn't care if a man mm -hmm. came to you feminine and said, My dad wasn't in my life. My mom didn't teach me this. You say, Bro, you're 38 years old. I don't want to deal with a feminine man that hasn't addressed his mm -hmm. issues. So for me, dealing with a woman that way, I'm going to tell you the same thing. I understand you had issues or whatever no, growing yeah. up and you had to be a certain way, but I'm not going to put up with it as far as trying to be in a relationship with you because you don't know how to be a feminine woman. And that's my point. Women who claim they have their stuff together are not going to allow us to hold her accountable for what some lesser of a woman did to us in our past. So why should the men who have their stuff together be held accountable for the men that didn't have their stuff together in her past? Dr. Umar, you have lost your mind. But if you want to do it, more power to you, brother. But don't expect the rest of us to jump on the bandwagon with you because we know better. Black men date out their race more than all other men put together. You know why? Racial inferiority. We don't think we're as good as the white man, so we need the white woman in order for us to feel an artificial sense of equality. There he goes, talking that French wee 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 again. I have never in my life compared myself to a white man before. I've always gone after my goals based on my wants and needs. And even though I've never dated a white woman before, if I did, it would have nothing to do with being inferior to anyone. It would be because I felt that she was a better choice for me. And not because of her race, it would be because of her character, who just happened to be a different race. It is self-hatred to the 20th power. I'm not against white women, but I support black women. And in my support of black women, I cannot condone interracial dating. See, he says it's self-hatred if you date outside your race. But notice, he didn't say anything about all these women making these videos saying that they don't need or want us. Which is the reason why a lot of men are not only going to another race, but they're going to a whole other country. But let's look at the economics. Take the romance out. Take the emotion out. Let's look at the economics. Marriage is a business contract. And if you're going to go into business, you want to go into business with the best candidate. And if it happens to be someone of a different race. Women on average live longer than men. So if I marry a white woman and I die prematurely, rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. I die prematurely, rest in peace, Marvel and marvelous Marvin Hagler. That white woman is not going to take any of the wealth that I built as a black man and give it to the black community so we can help regenerate ourselves. She's going to keep that money for herself and all that black money will go back into the hands of white society. Interracial marriage is economic betrayal. Economic betrayal. So the woman of another race will not take your money and put it back into the black community. Point taken. So name one black woman that was married to a black man where he died prematurely and left his wealth to her and she took the money and put it back into regenerating the black community. I'll wait, but if you have an answer, you probably can only name one or two black women that ever done it. The truth of the matter is, 95% of black women walking this earth already take whatever money they have coming in and give it back to the powers that be. Here's the proof. Who owns Prada? Who owns Gucci? Who owns Louis Vuitton? Who owns Vera Wang? Who owns Jimmy Choo's? Who owns the car manufacturer where these women buy these overpriced cars? Who owns the mortgage company where women take their money and buy these overpriced houses? Who owns the hair industry? You know, these wigs, nails, butterfly eyelashes, makeup. 95% of black women, when they get their hands on a large lump sum of money, they will turn around and give it all right back to the powers that be. Now that's economic betrayal, which is done on a daily basis. Only a small percentage of black women will actually put the money into something that pays them interest. And even a smaller percentage will put the money back into the black community. Dr. Umar himself has said that black people as a majority mishandle money. What do children do? They spend their money on the things that they like. Right. And they beg their parents for the things that they need. Is that not black America? Two 
two billion on Air Jordans every year. You're right. Four billion on liquor. Thirty billion on hair and beauty. Nearly a billion dollars on chicken, turkey, beef, and pork. Multiple billion on video games. Multiple million on children's cologne. How do I make sense out of this? Y'all can't care about yourselves because as much as you talk about reparations and as much as you talk about the next presidential election, look at the money you waste. And that last part he said, look at the money you waste. But then he wants to sit up here and talk about a black man leaving his wealth to a black woman like she would take the money and put it back into rebuilding the black community. Yeah, right. He's trying to make it sound as though men have no control over where his wealth goes. I'm 58 years old and I've never been married and I have a will in place that specifies how much each one of my family members will receive. If I were to get married after I moved to the Philippines, all that stays in place. I would then get a separate entity of money that would be left to my wife so that my family, who has been my family long before my Filipino wife came along, would get the same amount of money before I got married. I control who gets what, not my wife. It would be a different story if I was marrying a black woman and stayed here in the United States. My black wife would get the majority of my estate, but my surviving siblings would still get a nice share of my estate. You as a man control who gets what through your last will and testimony. He's trying to make it sound like as soon as you marry a woman from another race, she automatically gets everything you've built. The reality reality is she will but only if you leave it all to her y'all can't care about yourselves because as much as you talk about reparations and as much as you talk about the next presidential election look at the money you waste but we can't even have that conversation seriously without first addressing something else that plagues the community and that problem is cultural values and tendencies Dr. Umar accurately pointed out that the money that's in the hands of the black community gets quickly distributed to unnecessary and unproductive avenues like luxury goods. Exactly. Remember when they had the reparations conversation in the movie Barbershop 2? I think every black person should at least get a hundred thousand. Hundred thousand dollars? What do you think that's gonna do? That ain't gonna do nothing but make Cadillac number one dealership in the country. <laughs> And a lot of black people got upset when they heard that line in the movie, they would make Cadillac the number one car dealership in the country. We don't need reparations, all right? We need restraint. Restraint? Restraint. Maybe not Cadillac. Don't go out and buy a Range Rover when you're living with your mama. But the majority of black people, if they got any type of wealth, will give all the money back in a short period of time. And I'm not the only one that thinks so. Even this young man is saying the same thing. If the black community as a whole were to get financial reparations, where do you think most of those funds would go? Some would like to think that they would go to building institutions and infrastructure that would benefit the community, but that's wishful thinking given the current circumstances. Giving people money is not the same as giving people the knowledge on how to productively allocate and spend that money. Those funds would go right to the same place that they're currently going, and that's funding already established institutions in other communities. What we need is an educational, cultural, and individual shift towards valuing real economic progress, not just the perception of it. And until that education happens, Dr. Umar, if a black man dies prematurely and left his wealth to a black woman, the money could be mishandled and given right back to the very people you claim shouldn't have it. Good black men are not going to other races because they are inferior to other races of men. He is gonna get a 32-year-old Puerto Rican stepmother. That's gonna happen. <laughs> oh, yes. Good black men are going to other races because too many black women nowadays have unrealistic expectations and they say they don't need us, along with making life a little too difficult for black men. I've been with a black woman my whole life. Something happened to her. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> And that's the comedian D.L. Hughley, who's been married to the same black woman for 37 years now. I've done my time, y'all. For real. You happy for Serena? Be happy for me, God. So, Dr. Umar, if you want to stick around and have patience with black women who can't let a man lead because of what happened to her with some sorry black man in the past, knock your socks off. But please do not try to convince us good black men who do have our stuff together that we should stick around with you. Every person has to make a decision that's best for themselves. And should a black man decide to go to another country and seek companionship is what's best for him, don't try to shame or guilt him out of his decision. As the old saying goes, what's good for one man might not be good for another. So if you want to stick around, I think I speak for all the good black men out here when I say good luck and we wish you the best, but keep the rest of us out of it. Hey, somebody had to tell you and I love you, so it might as well be me. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to get notified when I post a new video. I post a new video every week. And in the meantime, will you please act right? My name is Raul. See you in another video. So if you enjoyed this video, check out one of these two videos right here. I'm sure you'll enjoy them too. And if you like, you can visit my channel. I have plenty of videos there. Go ahead. Don't be scared.